Oh, thank you. Hey everyone, before we get this episode started, also, <laughs> I wanted to sound like a YouTuber, that's why I started off with, hey everyone, like, subscribe below, you know how YouTubers are. Okay, but before we get started, I want you to know we are going extra big with the all-star season of Vulnerability Time podcast, so guess what? We got video podcast, so click in the episode description below if you wish to watch the video of the podcast as well. It'll be a YouTube link, so you can go ahead and get it going and get watching it. Make sure to follow, like, subscribe below. <laughs> Such a YouTuber, right? Anyways, folks, enjoy the episode. Okay, folks, so we just did like a good four minute talk right there. Um, but I forgot to click record, folks, so we love that. That was my worst fear, but I'm so glad that, I don't know, something just told me to have both screens pulled up. So, I gotta notice. So, I am your host, Josiah April. Um, with us we have Dylan. Dylan, you know, a good thing to like, you know, re reintroduce yourself. So, um, you, um, I asked you earlier, you know, what, um, Tell us a little bit about your platform before, folks, we get into whatever we will be talking about today. Tell us a little bit about your platform. And it will be in the episode description below, folks. The YouTube, all the social medias, all of it, you can find it below. But yeah, Dylan, tell us a little bit about platform. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm a fitness coach. Uh, we did just get done doing a uh, bodybuilding competition. So, like, the whole premise of doing that was essentially to kind of basically break out of my comfort zone and to one of my friends it was kind of her dream to do her first bikini show so essentially we did it together but my original intention wasn't actually to do the, sh the, the full competition it was basically to just kind of prep with her and everything and then she eventually she talked me into doing the actual show and I'm like She's like, you're doing all the work. You might as well just do, jump into the show or do the show. So I did, and it was probably one of the most challenging things I've done, but it was one of the most best decisions that I've made in a long time because it just created this like ripple effect in other areas of my life. Like I was getting up super early. I was getting more stuff done. I was becoming more time efficient and everything. And so, but my platform, I mean, as you, can kind of see on my platform you'll see a bunch of like shots from that and everything like that but mostly it's just kind of like motivational kind of stuff to kind of inspire people and just get people kind of in the state of mind of what it means to kind of take fitness seriously and kind of take it and what kind of uh, make it an important part of their lives and everything like that so I mean, it's all, it's full of all kinds of stuff and everything yeah. like that. It's mostly just to kind of motivate people, get people, yeah. you know. If I'm not mistaken, you also have a YouTube as well. Yeah, yes, yeah, that was, so the YouTube is something that we kind of jumped into probably a year ago, started taking it seriously. My videographer, his name is Darnell Reese. He actually used to be a, a audio engineer and everything, and so he, but he does, he's been doing video work for the past 10 years and he's amazing. I mean, his, the quality of his work is like absolutely phenomenal and he, it's very good. So if you ever want to check it out and everything like that, it's Una Fitness. You can find it basically just by typing in U-N-A-F-I-T-N-E-S-S -S, and it's got how-to videos, um, kind of short circuit videos, uh, at-home workouts, stuff like that but now it's becoming more of kind of like a it's shifting more into a vlog so like kind of what i was talking about before it's got videos on the process of what i was going through with that prep and everything like that and yeah so it's cool it's fun <laughs> yeah, that's super awesome um i remember i wanted to i've been thinking about asking you to be on the podcast for a while now so i thought we just like did. I really believe in uh, what you do. Um, yeah, and folks, um, all of the information um, will be in the episode description below. So, like, after this episode, 
Dylan, I'll just have you um, send me anything that you want me to put in the episode description. Okay. And I got cool. you back. Yeah, you know we support here, folks. We love it. Okay. So, um, let's see what's on the menu today. So, we got... So, I wrote down for last time, you know, um, the things that you were interested in talking about. Um, okay, folks. So, we got nutrition and how it affects well-being. Uh, following heart and passions. Um, persist through the falls of the journey. Spending time with nature. Mm, yeah. Relationships, past trauma, and also burnout. So Dylan, what, what, which which one are we starting off with? Honestly, you could just you pick. You can pick any of those. I'm not put the pressure on you. I don't know which one. Um, You're so good. good. Well, there's a lot of topics there, so let's just go with the first one. Let's start with the top. Okay. okay. First one. Like yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 And if we don't get into um, Ooh, actually, okay. I take that back. I definitely, there is something I actually want to hear about. Perfect. Uh, first. Yeah, and obviously, you know, we won't get to all of it. It's impossible to get it all done in an hour, but, you know, never say never. But, um, like I said, you're always welcome for a part two, for sure. Okay. Ooh, relationships. That. That. <clears throat> and I know that that can be, like... You know, that, that doesn't just mean romantic, that could also mean, you know, like just friendships, um, like a work environment, you know, everyday life, relationship with oneself as well. Um, we spend the most time with ourselves than anybody else because it's we're living in our body. Um, yeah, Dylan, what about uh, relationships stood out to you? Because, you know, you had, um, when we were going over Okay, what do you want to talk about? And just spread it out all this wisdom. So uh, let's let's go with relationships. What is what about that stood out to you? What made you want to talk about that? Yeah, so I mean, like as a fitness coach, relationships are a huge component of like what we do and everything like that. Because obviously, you can't really expect a person to grow and develop if you guys don't have a strong relationship. But I guess more on the internal side, like relationship with self, it's really kind of one of those things that I think a lot of people neglect is the understanding with themselves and how it affects the world around them. Because when you don't have a strong understanding of yourself, it does make things confusing and it does make um, your ability to kind of just, you know, actually, hold on. Are we able to like edit? Are we able to like cut some of this out and edit, edit some of this or anything like that? I don't know if that's possible. Um, technically, yeah, I can, but with the whole thing with vulnerability at the time, it's okay to fuck up and make mistakes and stuff like that. Okay. What you just said, no, like you made a great point. You know, um, it kind of goes into like um, the relationship with ourselves. You know, we can end up projecting that onto others, whether we know it or not. There we go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what you... Let's talk about. Yeah. So I guess there we go. So with projection and everything like that, I, that's something that. So going back to kind of what I was saying, I was going to train a thought a little bit, but yeah, projections. It's a it's a huge thing that people really don't un, like. People understand it and get it, but those kind of outward projections that people see, um, that people obviously put out, are really unresolved issues within themselves that can become damaging if not obviously addressed. And so I think it's important to take time to spend time with yourself. Obviously that's something yeah. that a lot of people, there are a lot of people in the world that really don't spend enough time with themselves because maybe they're scared of kind of seeing the shadow, the darker parts of themselves and they don't want to approach those things. They don't want to face those things, the demons, I guess if you could put it that yeah. way. And that's problematic because if you are in a situation that does elicit a specific response or a specific reaction, it can really create a yeah. damage effect within a relationship. And then that kind of builds up on one another. And then eventually it just creates kind of a wall between whether it's intimate or whether it's romantic, whether it's a friendship, it can kind of create a wall between you two because it's not something that's um, you took time to resolve. And obviously we're not right. going to be perfect 
not going to be perfect, but it's it's important to address those little like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Like like you said, you know, we're not going to be perfect, and that doesn't mean we're not you know capable of growth and learning, uh, and you know like learning our relationship with ourselves. So I think you just. Thanks for the wisdom, Dylan. Literally. Also, also don't worry about like losing train of thought. I there have been plenty of episodes where I literally have just stopped talking for 30 seconds and we all were just in silence because I lost my train of thought and it turns out I never found that train again. So I just <laughs> tell people, I was like, oh, I fucked up, but this is vulnerability time. We stutter, we lose our train of thoughts on here. Oh well, we're human. Um, yeah, okay, something something that you mentioned, and this is something that I learn um from my higher power i think it was like a couple months ago um you had mentioned the word demons and you know our own demons and you know and i don't know why this has never hit me before but i made the choice um to actively love my demons back into angels Cause I'm like, hmm, every demon used to be an angel at one point. And I just like, I'm gonna love it back together. Cause I was like, maybe that's what it means for me to literally just like acknowledge, love it, validate it, like love me uh, regard regardless. And I was like, maybe the demons need a hug more than they need harm. Um, maybe they need a hug first before they need healing and help. Maybe that hug is first because you know that hug and that love that starts a multitude of things. But I know for me, I was too busy trying to harm it away and be so hard on those demons when really, um, really a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, they just needed a hug first. Yeah. No, that's a good, that's a really good way to put it. And I think like it goes back to um, kind of what I was talking about with like working with your shadow self, because I think those demons or whatever shadows, negative aspects of ourselves are very, um, they do need to be approached and they do need to be faced. And it's not a comfortable thing and it's not supposed to be a comfortable thing. So if you've got these toxic traits and everything like that, or these really bad qualities, they're not, supposed to be something that's like a, it's not supposed to necessarily be a fun ride to kind of work through those things and everything like that so I think kind of branching off what you said giving working through and getting to the point when you can love those demons and integrate them into your life to help kind of um, create a better version of yourself because that's really what you're doing is like you're healing these wounds and you're kind of making amends with these yeah. demons to really help other people. At least right. I am in my case, in my situation, when I think about myself and the bad things that I'm working through in myself, I think I'm trying to use those things to help people um, become more aware of their own kind of problems and stuff like that, so. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful, Dylan. Oh my gosh, you know, cause even the demons have purpose, huh? <laughs> yeah, of course. Even the demons have purpose. Well, that is beautiful. I do have a question, though. Is this your first ever podcast? It is. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. That's, well, that's, why at the beginning, that's why at the beginning I was like, hey, can you like, put this out and everything? Because it's, yeah, it's my first one. Oh, no. I was about to say, you were like, it's like you've been on many podcasts before. That it's just... I don't know, you're doing phenomenal. Seriously, I was like, hmm. Is this your first podcast? I was like, it doesn't sound like it. I was like, but that's a great thing. That's a great thing. Thank oh, you. wow, it's your first that. podcast. I did not know that. Well, go you. Um, okay, so, ooh, something really interesting that has been talked about a little bit, but it's never really been like an actual topic is that whole spending time with nature aspect because that is something that it's been on my mind more and more to do i just haven't done it yet but i can tell i'm gonna do it eventually um what does that do for the body and why does that stand out to you i'm curious um 
and there's a lot that can be said with this, but yeah, right. so I think, and this is just like, a, so I've got a multitude of beliefs and everything like that, but I think spending time in nature kind of reconnects us and disconnects us from kind of the bombarding of frequencies that we're constantly surrounded with, with cell phones and with technology, which I'm not bashing those things, obviously. Right. They, they it's just an observation. Yeah, and so if you can if you can take a step back and reconnect with Gaia and like reconnect with Earth and nature, it can really help you kind of discover. And I mean, going back to what we talked about at the beginning too, it can really help you kind of heal specific wounds because it's almost like meditation in a way because it does reconnect you to yourself and it takes you away from all the other distractions because you're back, you know, in nature. So I. It's healing in my mind and everything like that, in a literal sense, I guess. Yeah. Talking about like walking in plant, like around plants and stuff like that, and like trees and everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, see, two things about that. That's there's actually um, a lot of studies that that do say spending time in nature um, actually helps the mental health. Obviously, it doesn't work like that for everybody, but they said you know that there is that is a reality for a lot of folks. Yeah. Um, so it's clearly valid. Um, and then two, something I never thought about necessarily, you, you made me think about it, is kind of like, um, boy, I need to shave. Wait, what? <laughs> there I go, there I go, getting off track. Um, oh, you're honestly, talking about this or anything? Hmm? You're talking about your, your, your facial hair or anything? Mm hmm, right here. I need to shave. That looks good. You look good. Hey, yeah, stop okay. it. <laughs> I appreciate that. I really, really do appreciate that. It's nice to hear compliments. Um, so our relationship with Gaia, which also we know as Earth, um, I, I know for me, when I speak of Earth, I, majority of the time, not all the time, but majority of the time, when I'm talking about the world, I'm talking about the people in it. So when I say, oh, I'm tired of the world, Earth is annoying, I'm meaning people, but then I'm like, also, you just made me think of like, you know, at least for me personally, I, I think I need to develop a relationship with Gaia, with Earth. I think so, I mean, she's doing her best to, you know, feed us, keep us alive. Yeah. Um, it seems like she loves us, but you know, we, we, we can, we can grow in learn, learning to love her better. There we go. Let's see that. We can definitely grow in that, but it seems like she loves us the best that she can. She can. Like, she's feeding us all these beautiful sceneries. Um, hmm, that actually, like, really encourages me to spend time with nature. Yeah, and it, I mean, it doesn't, well, I mean, there's like a different, a bunch of different ways you can look at it, too, because, like, nature doesn't necessarily have to be spending time in, like, physical nature spending time with nature can also mean spending time with nature that your own human nature like whether it's i guess if you're a competitive person your, your nature is more you know more towards the fire and more towards like being competitive and cultivating that aspect or maybe it's you're more of a passive person and you're more of a timid person and maybe your nature is more of like being calm and more, you know, spending time with cultivate, cult, cultivating that aspect of nature. It, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a, you know, a thing, but sorry to switch that up. No, like that. no, this is, this is what this podcast is for. It's to free flow, conversational, go from here to here, back to there, whatever. That's interesting. You just, you made me learn something right there, you know, like different types of nature, uh, like our human nature, just like there's different aspects of like relationship. It's not just exclusive to romantic. Yeah, like empathy, um, compassion. Maybe you need to spend time more, spend more time being more of a compassionate person, and, you know, because some people lose touch with yeah. the component of what it means to be human and human yeah. nature. But, yeah. You know, honestly, Dylan, recently I've been, I, I've been like, I've been like wishing that I could like lose touch with compassion and stuff like that. Obviously in the long run, that's not going to benefit me. And honestly, I'd rather 
stay as compassionate as I am than not have compassion. Um, it just, it's hard when, when, when you come across others who have lost their compassion or maybe were never taught compassion or shown compassion or loved towards compassion. Um, all, all of it, you know, there's multiple realities of why something is or isn't. So, but, I don't know, I'm just going to be vulnerable. It's, it's hard. It can definitely be hard being compassionate in a not as compassionate environment. And it can be, you know, just strangers at the store, just, you know, whatever. Um, so, I don't know. Hearing you say that, it's kind of holding me accountable. I just feel like my higher power is holding me accountable through you to just be like, you know what, it's okay to be compassionate. It's more than a, it's more of a gift than a curse, I swear. Yeah. Um, because I definitely, <laughs> I feel like I can be compassionate to a fault. Um, obviously, I'm working on that and I'm able to, you know, set boundaries, you know, um, however, you know, it's just not perfect. And the boundaries, I mean, it's it's just not perfect. It's doing a lot better than like a year ago or two years ago. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but it's just been something on my mind recently. There's been a lot of things on my mind, by the way. Of course, always. <laughs> fun fact. Yeah, just like fun fact. I was like, yeah. my ADHD, I will think of everything. And also, I like to just learn. Um, the social science, you know, everything that's not physical, mostly. And so, like, I'm, I'm a lot more aware of certain things because um, I also use it, you utilize it to learn. And something that I have been aware of is like, you know, it seems like there's definitely, at least from what I've experienced. Now, I've experienced a lot of compassionate people, but what I'm saying is like. When I'm in an environment where someone isn't as compassionate, it it hurts. And, and the hurt is so much more rememberable. It's so much more memorable than happiness. For whatever reason, humans are like this. <laughs> we are just like, we can have a hundred or, yeah, I wouldn't be different. We can have a hundred happy moments, but that, there's that like hundred and first hurt and like that is so easy because it has it seems like it has a harder impact so it's like easy to remember so that's kind of like what i'm dealing with right now it's like that internal battle of like listen josias it is okay to be compassionate just continue to work on you know compassionate with boundaries and it's just like in my personal life i'm pretty good with it but it's like when I'm around around like strangers, I'm not the best. At no, it's all right. yeah. it, and like with the boundaries thing too, uh, it's like I think that's something that I like I've had to learn over the past probably the same thing. Like it was really bad. It was probably really bad. It, it was really bad before, and I've had to learn a lot about putting up boundaries just with my clients and just with people in general because you do, it does become an emotional draining thing when you're constantly putting yourself out there and you're constantly wanting to be the support for every single person around you. And it's not something that you can do it and everything like that, but at a certain point, your cup empties. Yeah. You have to, you do have to go back and kind of refill that cup and recharge your battery and everything like that. And then people do take advantage of that kindness and, and when you don't put up boundaries and walls and everything it's not even being like selfish and everything like that it's 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 more selfless than anything because how can you go and kind of be an energizer for other people when you're completely drained and everything like that so the boundaries thing is like become for me too like it's become such a big component of my life even with people certain friends and certain families that i never thought i'd have to put boundaries up with um but it, it's not because I don't love them, don't want to be around them. It's just because it's because you love yourself too. Yeah, and as in, if you're in, if you're a very empathetic person and you feel a lot, it, it's easy to 
uh, it takes a toll on you. It does. Like it takes a big toll on you, and it becomes very hard because uh, it, it drains your battery. It literally just drains your battery. So you, you, you gotta put up boundaries. Like boundaries are essential, and everything like that. especially with, again, like with the field that I'm in and like the work that I, I do and everything like that. People come to you. Um, they seek. Obviously, it's a physical thing. They, you know, for the most part, where people are like, "Oh yeah, I want to lose weight, or I want to get stronger, I want to do, do this competition, or whatever it is." But then there is that under side to that emotional side, that spiritual side that does come with it, because it's never just a physical thing when you train people at all, and you do have to almost play a role as a therapist and everything, and like almost like a, a life coach in a way, because these people are not. It's not just stemming from oh i'm snacking or oh i'm like oh i can't oh, i'm eating all this it's it's never just that it's right. always it's coming from something else it's never right. it's never like that you know so mm-hmm. with what you're saying it's like yeah boundaries have to be put up in this field of work that i do and everything like that has taught me to put up boundaries between people and be more assertive and be more um kind of direct in a sense with people which i've never really done before because i've always right been it's hard i have a question yeah what's your personality type oh man it's changed it sounds weird but it's honestly changed a lot like i, I used to, it was like i it's like i can't remember if it was enfp i don't remember the difference like personality mm-hmm. type, but i consider it i'm i'm it's, it's weird it's both i feel like i'm very outgoing but i'm also like introverted at the same time are you an infj maybe you i don't know infj yeah. we, okay. <laughs> you sound a lot like me i don't know well if you are an infj infjs and infps are close but um if you are an infj i want you to know there's only two percent of us that exist in this country fun fact literally only two percent um I don't know, everything that you're saying, it's definitely, oh man, INFJ, it's definitely giving the INFJ vibes, which is an amazing thing, literally, because there are people that, 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 that need hearts like ours. Yeah, I mean, would you, are you a pretty, would you, because people have just, do, have people describe you as like being like an empath or like in a, like a very feel it bird, yeah. Like 1,000%. I feel... I feel, I feel a lot, like, I had to set a boundary within myself of like, you know what, it's okay to not take on the weight of the world, just size, it's okay to not be the superhero every time, because like, sometimes you gotta lay down the cape and you gotta get some rest, you know, but it's hard to do that, um, interesting, I, I, hmm, and, and also that's something interesting that you said, like the personality types can change because it can. Like in our healing journey, we can be one personality type like years ago and then like 10 years later, we're a different personality type. That's yeah. what I think is so cool. I'm so glad that you brought that up because I was gonna bring that up, but I actually forgot. So you bring it up, it's phenomenal. Um, yeah, like two things can be true at once. Like. Yes, I care about this person, and I also care about myself, and I also need to rest as well. I also need to refill my cut. And um, it took me a while to learn um, that the word selfish, when it was first um, and put it into a language, um, it didn't mean something, um, it didn't have a stigma like it does now. Um, it does now have a stigma, but at first it wasn't that at all. I would describe it best as being um, what selfish used to be. It was basically, I don't know the exact words, so don't quote me on it, but the meaning of it uh, was basically, you know, uh, yes, this person matters. Like, yes, I love this person, and I also love me too. So it's just like, yeah, you gotta, you, of course, be there, help people. We can't do it all, and it's okay to be there for ourselves, especially if no one else is like being there for us. Because I know, at least for me, INFJ is like, we're definitely, uh, uh, 
we definitely are the heroes, but we don't really know how to have people be heroes for us. Or people don't think that we need heroes because we come off like we have it all so well and grand and I'm just like, oh no, I'm like, uh, leave, like, I, I, I suffer from depression. Like, I was just like, I suffer I'm from actually depression. dying. <laughs> hmm? No, I was like, I'm actually slowly dying inside. <laughs> right, exactly. And I'm like, God, jokes on y'all. I'm, like you said, I'm actually dying inside. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's interesting. There was another question that I had, but of course I forgot. Well, and yeah, I don't forget necessarily you. that much. I'm just like really in tune to the conversation. Like, well, like I wanted to ask you something. What what inspired you to do this? Like what inspired you to start this and do that? Like, to get this going into get just to start this podcast and like that. So you can ask me. Have I ever told you anyone's? No, not really, oh, no. Cool. Oh great. Okay, great. Okay, so Originally, the name of this podcast was going to be You Are Not Alone. Okay. Um, and then it changed into Vulnerability Time, um, which I liked a lot better because I recorded episode zero, and I say episode zero because it was never released. It was technically the first episode, but it was never released. And I found myself kept, tr- kept trying to be like these other podcasters when they say everything so perfectly and everything's just so... And I just kept messing up. Like, I think it took me like 33 times to finally get just the trailer. You know, just everything said correctly, you know, um, having to go in and edit. And then I was just like, I feel like that's not me. So I was like, you know what? Let's be vulnerable. Let's come in. not perfect. Let's, let's fuck it up. Let's like mess up. It's okay. But the um for a year going back to, to the start start um for for about a year and a half um i was afraid to do the podcast um but and, and this was in a, a point in my life where i was just starting to love the fact that you know um fear it's gonna happen um it's more so, at least for me, I learned um, at that time in my life, fear was more so about doing the action rather than feeling the feeling. Because I'm just like, honestly, I don't want to have, it taught me that I don't want to have to wait till I'm not afraid for me to start something. I was like, you know what? I'm going to start it afraid. I, I'm going to do it afraid. I'm going to do it. And the catalyst for that was you just never know who is on their way home to commit suicide. And if someone out there is listening and they just randomly come across this podcast and they hear someone like you and it helps them stay on this earth even just one day longer, it's worth it. So I was like, honestly, this isn't about just me. It's not about just me. So I'm just like, Josias, do it afraid. Because you remember a time where you needed to hear a random podcast. You know, you didn't have no one that would inspire. You didn't have that. So just do it and see what happens. Because um, this is, it's, It's all about that person that I will never meet ever, ever. You will never meet ever, ever. Because this is heard in about over 33 countries as of right now. So it's like, it's about them. They're, who knows, even five years from now, someone listening today could need to come back to this podcast five years from now. Um, Or someone listening today, like, yeah, I don't really need to hear it, but I'm going to listen to Dylan. But I don't really need to hear what he's saying. I'm not going through that. You know, your words could come up five years from now and help them stay on this earth just a little bit longer. So that's why I started the podcast is because people are dying out here. I want to do anything to help them. I love that. I love that. And the fear thing is it's such a powerful thing because it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes it could be a compass to lead us where we need to go next, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that fear doesn't necessarily have to always be 
it's scary for sure. I mean, it's fear, but it's like sometimes that's that's what we need to propel us to our next evolutionary development. Yes, exactly. And and it can save us because, like, I mean, if you see a venomous snake, I hope that someone has. Okay, I'm lying because I I actually love venomous snakes. Um, I don't actually have fear. I actually try to. I actually tried to get a, a pet venomous snake, um, but they were like sold out because of the pandemic, and this was during the pandemic. Um, so. Okay. No, but for oh. someone. <laughs> a tiger just roaming around in your neighborhood. I hope that someone would have fear enough to, you know, uh, not go pet it wearing a meat suit. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like, you know, it's just like, you know, I feel like fear definitely has that stigma on it. I feel like there's multiple reasons fear has a stigma. I feel like one of the reasons is because I, I do know, like, at least how I've been taught and what I have observed from society is kind of like this um, running away from the uncomfort. Yeah. So I think, um, um, so yeah, running away from the uncomfort, and I mean that in the aspects of like toxic positivity, you know, just two things can be true at once. I was like, yeah, you can be grateful for what you have and you can also be depressed. Right, Both yeah. Things like, can exist. No, and it's, it's funny too because you were talking about how you were like doing the podcast was scary. The same thing was happening when uh, Darnell and I would meet up for videos and stuff like that because, like, going like before, I would post videos and they would be um, like it would just be with my phone and stuff like that. But as soon as he, he came out with like the lights and the camera and like the legit camera and stuff, I was like, it was nerve wracking, it was scary, and everything. Oh, like, shit. Yeah, and like people are gonna be like watching it, like even though like I don't have a huge presence and everything like that, but I was like, still people I know are gonna be watching and everything like that. It's still gonna be like all these like insecurities were popping up, but then the more that I started doing it, the more the easier it got, the more flow yeah. it just started flowing easier, and then like my fear of it kind of just like subsided. And now I'm like more relaxed in front of the camera and like i'm sure it's the same thing with you with the podcast i'm sure you're like right now like you're smooth you're, you're talking about it you're talking about things and it's like buttery you know yeah uh, thank you yes props to you yeah i love that you mentioned that yeah it, it like a lot of the times on the other side of fear we're gonna enjoy it we we are gonna uh, enjoy it it might not happen right away but it's just like a lot of the times we're gonna enjoy it um, it's like honestly we don't know until we know so yeah and like I used to hate my voice now I don't <laughs> mind hearing my voice I'm just because it's like how I sound in person like what I hear then like if I hear myself on a recording I'm like who is that it's like, no I'm the same way I used to I used to not like hearing my voice on camera and stuff so I feel that completely you got a good voice you got a good voice still in well, I love that I love that Okay, okay, um, so let's see. Okay, cool, I think we got time for one more. Um, this yep. one is kind of, um, kind of like right up your alley, and I want to know your thoughts on this, actually. Okay, so nutrition and how it can affect well-being. Yeah, so, um, I guess we'll start with, like, processed goods and processed foods, because we were kind of talking about that before and everything when we first met and like so like when we're talking about like refined carbs and processed foods and everything like that it's for example of like cereals and certain granolas and stuff that's just like packaged in plastic bags like that um not talking about like rice and stuff but you know those things along those lines it does it puts a lot of strain um stress on our pancreas and it does make our cells less ins responsive towards uh, insulin and so it can create more stress in the body and as a result I mean when you are stressed it increases cortisol and it makes it much harder to kind of like burn fat and it does just makes us uncomfortable and everything like that when you're uncomfortable and when you have a lot of stress a lot of people get irritable and then it affects the world around us and then you know it, it makes us more likely to be agitated and everything like that so I like when it comes to food and eating whole foods I think it's extremely important because 
not only are you getting, you know, food, like when you're consuming leafy greens and you're consuming quality sources of protein, like, um, like arugula, kale, spinach, chicken, you know, salmon, stuff like that. Ooh. You're getting it straight from source, you know, <laughs> you're getting it straight yeah. from source. It's like, unless it's been like blasted with pesticides and stuff like that, if you're getting it from like a farmer's market or something. Well, I'm serious. Like they no, like- sure The way you said it was funny, blast with pesticides. I was like, you got a point. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, you got, got a point. There's so many messed up companies that are just like putting all this stuff in our food. And I'm like, this is, it's, it's, we can get everything from the earth naturally. We don't need to add anything to it in that sense. You know what I mean? And not that it's always easy, you know, to, to grow. Like, not all of us have access to a farm, but yeah, it's funny, it's funny though. Um, but yeah, that stuff is like straight from source, you know what I mean? It's straight from, yeah. it's straight from, the, from the earth and it allows us to feel better because you're getting the nutrients that you need for your cells to function. And yeah. The nutrients. So, yeah. You want to know what I figured out? What's that? And my best friend pointed this out. Well, he made the connections for me. So, I knew that, you know, back then everything used to be organic. Like, everything used to be organic. It was just... I, uh, let's see, last century, the uh, beginning of last century, um, uh, everything was just organic. That's just how things were, you know. Um, and now it seems like we're kind of like s- trapped in the cycle of the money makers because it's like it's cheaper to buy, you know foods that probably aren't the best for us, you know, um, and then it's more expensive to buy the natural food, and so I'm just like, okay, so they're making money regardless because they know that, you know, um, and I, I did a little bit of digging, a little bit about the studies of what they put in foods, and I was like, I was just like, so I'm like, honestly, they're making money because they're, it's going to, a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people, it's going to make us go into high cholesterol, uh, inflammatory stomach, and guess who's getting that money? Not us. Right. Another company. So it's just like, oh, it's just a cycle. Now, this is not to bash anyone or anything like that, because I do know, like, you know, not everyone can afford, um, like, I know for me, like, right now, um, I'm a master student. I can't afford nothing, but it's just like I can't afford to buy the healthy foods, the organic foods that I want to buy. Um, but one day, you know, when I get the funds, finally, you know, I'm gonna make an attempt to um, eat. I would say right now I eat like a mix of like healthy and unhealthy. Um, but um, I, yeah, but. But uh, for the folks who, you know, are, you know, wanting to go organic or thinking about going organic, um, what would you have to say for, what, what is any advice you could give? Or folks that even want to start their workout journey, just, you know, just overall, like, well-being. Yeah, I mean, I'm, again, it's, yeah, with, with the whole food thing, it's like, I'm not, Cause there's certain th- foods that like I will consume that aren't necessarily like, yeah. like my diet is not 100% like I'm eating, you know, brown mm-hmm. rice and chicken. And even though during the, the prep and everything, I was basically eating like all quality whole foods and everything. But yeah. um, I think a gradual, like a good place to start is doing a gradual um, like transition. So not going from okay, so you eat cereal in the morning and everything like that. Not going from like, okay, I'm gonna eat cereal and then I'm gonna jump straight into like sweet potatoes, uh, broccoli, asparagus, you know, like maybe doing something to kind of like transition slowly, you know what I mean? With maybe your meals, add a little bit of like Brussels sprouts or something like that. Or maybe start with like eating one meal with like spinach and chicken or something like that and just gradually but don't you know most people will rebound if they try to it's like with people who smoke and everything like that smoke like a turkey yeah some people can some people could do that and everything like that like i meant you know i 
commend you. I think that's amazing if you could do that. Um, but for the other people and everything like that, like just go slow with it. Don't, yeah. don't, don't, you know, don't just jump into it. Just gradually start incorporating right. foods in your in your diet. You know. Fun fact. Uh, overall, cold turkey is horrible for the brain and it puts unnecessary amount of stress on the nervous system. So, oh. for folks who can do it, great, go for you, go yeah. you. Um, but um, how the body is better to um, receive and to unlearn and relearn a lot of things is by, like you said, dealing, you know, a gradual transition. But um, to folks out there who um, who can cold turkey it, I, good shit. Honestly, good for you. I, good for Same. you, seriously. <laughs> right. If your body can do it. Yeah. Like, if you mentally can do that, I, that's amazing. You know, and like, be nice. yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, so folks, I know we're wrapping up here. Ooh, this is a perfect time too. It's just 45 minutes. This is perfect. Um, Dang, that's, that's crazy. Dylan, like you just spit so much wisdom. It's gonna be hard for me to find an advertisement sound bite. That's why I was like writing down a lot of things because I'm I'm like writing the time. I was like, okay, this could be an advertisement sound bite. I have 13, 14, 17 uh, sound bites that I wow. got that I gotta discern. That's all you need. Hey, <laughs> couldn't do it without you. <laughs> couldn't be on here without you reaching out, so. <laughs> yes, and thanks for being on here. Okay, folks, um, Dylan, I'm going to ask you after this if you want to do a part two in the future. Um, we would yeah. love to have you, because I know there's a couple more things on the menu here that um, definitely can hit on. I definitely want to hear uh, past trauma and burnout. I definitely want to, like, touch on that topic yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's a big one. That one, for sure, I, I I would be more than open to, if you don't want to talk about it today, doing another one to talk about that, because that one's like a loaded, that's going to be a, like a loaded one, for sure. Right, and yeah. Dylan's like, that's his own episode, just as it is. Okay. Yeah. All right, sure. folks. Um, so I will see y'all next week for whatever we will be talking about next week. I don't know whose episode's next. I don't know all that right now. Folks, we're just recording. And we're just going to release in November 2023, December 2023, one of those months. Um, but uh, find out, folks. Oh, my God, Dylan, this is amazing. All right. Uh, oh, folks, um, to whoever is listening and watching this, if no one has told you today that you are lovable, please allow me to be the first and allow yourself to be the second. Folks, I want you right now if you can, to randomly text someone that they are worth it or that they are loved. Just randomly. You don't even gotta respond back to them, folks. It'll be funny, just that, just all their shock. But you just never know who needs to hear it. So I'm gonna do that right now before I forget. Oh my God, Dylan, you're about to do it too? Of course. Oh my God. Ah. Never know who needs it. Cool, cool. Alrighty. Alrighty, folks. See y'all next time. Bye. Thanks for having me. Peace.